welcome back to the fourth installment of Wind Orchestra Masterworks, a conversation where we will dive into the Wind Orchestra's greatest stories and legends. I'm your host, Mike Corson, and here with me once again is the conductor of the Lone Star Wind Orchestra, Eugene Corporon. Eugene, it's great to see you again. Great to be here. Great to have this opportunity to visit with you. Can you give our viewers just a little bit of background on the saxophone in the wind orchestra? It was invented by Adolf Sax, as you might imagine, uh, a Belgian. However, he made his way to Paris, France, and that's where he did a lot of his work. And it was controversial work because he got involved in all these instrument companies that were trying to get their instruments approved by the military uh, to sell to the entire French military and make a lot of money. And as you might expect, he had some, uh, oh, let's say competitors. But he had a couple of people that really supported him. One was Hector Berlioz, of all people. And the other person was General Rumney, head of this committee that was going to make these determinations. And there's great stories. It could make a made-for-TV movie about uh, the competitions that went on and uh, sex instruments competed against other instrument makers and instrument makers were kidnapped his players and were headed to the competition and uh, all sorts of great stories but if it were not for Adolf Sack we wouldn't have this fantastic uh, ensemble within the ensemble the people who've advanced the saxophone quartet in the band uh, two come to mind uh, actually three um, Michael Colgrass, and these aren't in any specific order, who wrote this fantastic piece for a solo quartet and wind orchestra called um, uh, Urban Requiem. It's a phenomenal piece that features the saxophones. Husa, of course, in Prague, his movement that featured the aria movement that featured the sax quartet. And the Dahl Sinfonietta, which is another piece in the soul movement that, that borrowed music, interestingly, from his concerto that he wrote in 1949. With that, I think we are ready to go ahead and bring in our guest for today. He's currently the principal saxophonist for the Lone Star Wind Orchestra. Many viewers may know him by his YouTube name of Dallas Sax, but we know him as Dr. Joey Resendez. Welcome to the show, Joey. Hi, Mike. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here with, with you and... and maestro corporon absolutely can you tell us a little bit about yourself yes i'm originally from houston texas i um went to clear lake high school down near nasa <laughs> i uh, went to baylor university for a bachelor of music education degree while i was there i participated uh, we hosted a nasa and for folks that aren't in the know nasa is north american saxophone alliance we hosted a regional conference where Donald Sinta was our guest artist. And I was fortunate to play uh, a couple of movements of the Ingolf Dahl saxophone concerto that, that Eugene talked about a little bit ago. And it was a really great experience and I decided that I wanted to get my master's. So I auditioned up at the University of Michigan in the spring of, I guess it, or maybe this was the fall of 2002. I ended up going there for my master's and then coming down to do my doctorate at the University of North Texas. When we're thinking saxophone, can you give us some composers or wind band selections that feature uh, the section either as an ensemble or a soloist? For me personally, whenever we're doing a piece by Granger, my ears kind of perk up because I love I love playing Granger. And I think most woodwind players are, are gonna be with me on that. It's the beautiful flowing lines, his love of, 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 of saxophone, he played the saxophone and um, just the just the lines that he gives us is it's real flow. I, I just love playing playing um, playing Granger. I love playing Maslanka. Maslanka has written a saxophone quartet. Um, well, he's written many saxophone quartets. He's also written a saxophone quartet concerto for band. And as far as techniques and things, I think that um, composers really like to use the voice, the the singing voice like quality of the saxophone. Mm. Definitely it's the use of, like Eugene was talking about, the, the saxophone quartet. And we get such a range of colors and, 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 and really just range um, that we can get through with the instruments. Um, it's kind of, we're kind of, um, kind of special in the ensemble with that. Can you tell us about any memorable moments that you've had with Lone Star? Are there any special performances that you want to highlight? 
whenever we get to do our, our presentation um, before the concert, um, like we did this past, I think it was this past, um, before we did the Stevenson Quartet uh, Concerto, um, when we get to talk with the, with the audience and kind of um, show them around the instrument and show them the different sizes. I brought out my sopranino, I brought out my bass saxophone, and, and, mm -hmm. and it, it was, it's really fun just, just, just seeing all that. So I, re I really like doing that. And, and, and really it's, all, it's a lot about um, the, the, the people I meet and the friends and, and just playing. As, as, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, I don't, I don't teach full time. I, I'm um, traveling full time and, and visiting schools and, and, and whatnot. So I, it, it, I'm not a band director or anything. So um, really everything I do with Lone Star, whether it be you know, just a rehearsal or a concert or, or, a, um, or some recording session is special to me. So, <laughs> because it, 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 it brings me back to, 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 my, to my passion. Well, I think with that, we're gonna go ahead and close up our fantastic conversation here. Enjoy talking with you both. Uh, we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.